Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. So in this video, we are going to discuss Geeks for Geeks problem of the day and today's problem is maximum subset sum and it is a medium level problem. So this particular problem says that we have been given an array of size n and we have to find the maximum subset sum of elements we can make from the array such that for every two consecutive elements, at least one of the elements is present in our subset. So again, I repeat that this particular part is very important for every two consecutive elements, at least one of the elements. So when you see at least one of the elements, that means we can also include all the elements in the array, but for every two consecutive elements, uh, we should include at least one of them. So let us discuss the first sample test case that we have here. So we have this sample test case. And this one more thing, or like you can also interpret this particular statement as, for example, you have some elements like this. There should be no consecutive elements, two consecutive elements, such that both of them are not taken. Right. So, for example, if I didn't take this element, I will have to take the next element. Right. Otherwise, it is not a valid configuration. So, for every two elements, I have to take at least one of them. This is what the question says. Now, when we have the elements 1, minus 1, 3 and 4, what I can do is I can take this particular element, I can take this particular element and since I have already taken this element for these two consecutive elements, I can safely ignore this particular element and then take this one. So if I add all of them 4 plus 3 plus 1 that is equals to 8 and that is our answer. Right. So this problem can be solved with DP. So whenever I say that this problem can be solved with DP, some people have the questions in their mind that how can I say that this problem can be solved with DP. So like uh, for these kind of problems, so basically if you have done some kind of DP, then uh, till now you must have observed one thing that it is kind of a knapsack problem that you have, you have been given some elements and you have to select some elements from them. Now uh, in a knapsack, the condition is different and here the, uh, the condition is slightly different. So I would say it is a modification of a simple knapsack. Now the condition is for every two elements, I have to take one of them. So whenever you hear this, then uh, there is one thing that can click into your mind and that is when you start traversing from in the array. So let's say we are moving from right to left, right? If we are moving in this direction and let's say we have taken the current element, right? So I have taken this particular element, right? When I come to this particular position, now since I have taken the previous element, I have the choice to take this element or skip this element, right? I'm trying to tell you what are the conditions that will be there to form our DP states, right? So uh, in, in an abstract, the conditions uh, might be according to the weights or the conditions might be according to exploring various parts. But in this particular DP, we will see that if I have taken the previous element, now I have a choice whether I want to take the current element or not, right? But if let's say I did not take the previous element, so I have not taken this element, right? For this particular element, I don't have a choice. I will have to take this element. Why? Because if I have not taken the previous element, then I will have to take this. This is a compulsion on me because if I don't take this as well, then among these two consecutive elements, uh, like no, none of them would be selected and that is not a valid configuration, right? So if I have not taken the previous element, I will have to take the current element. This is my compulsion. So obviously at each state, so we'll have a DP of size n, right? At each state, right? At each, uh, I would say at each index, there are two possible things, right? Either I've taken the current previous element or I've not taken the previous element. So obviously I'll have to form a DP of size n cross 2 because at each index I will have two possibilities to reach the current index, right? So let's say we are denoting with 0, let's say I denote that I've taken the previous element and it is not compulsory to, to take the current element. So let's say it is not compulsory to take current, to take current element. So dp of i0 will denote that we are at the i8th index and 0 denotes that it is not compulsory to take the current element. Now let's say it was 1 here that it means it is compulsory to take the current element. Compulsory to take current element. Right. So obviously dp of i1 will denote that I am at the i8th index. I am trying to decide for the current i8th index. And one denotes it is compulsory to take the current element. Why? Because I have not taken the previous element as well. So what we'll do is at each dp of ij, we will try to form our two answers. So there is one way that I do not take the current element, right? So if I don't take the current element, let's say it is denoted by x. So if I don't take the current element, then 
the answer for dp of ij will be equal to dp of i minus 1 and now i will have to pass 1 why why is this so because uh, like uh, you move to the previous index but since you are not taking the current element for the next element it is compulsory to take that particular element so right that is why i am passing 1 let's say we try to take the current element so let's say it is an array a I am at index i, so I am taking the current element, I am adding its value plus dp of i minus 1. Since I am taking the current element, it is not compulsory for me to take the previous element. Right? So, this is how our dp states will depend on each other. Now, if I am at dp, let's say dp of i0, that means it is not compulsory to take the current element, I can take max of x, comma y. And for dp of a1, let's say, uh, this will be equals to uh, y because at y we are considering the current element. One means that it is compulsory for us to take the current element and we will take y because it is compulsory for us to take the current element. And at the end what I can just do is for the last index dp of n 0 will be my answer. Right. This will be my final answer. Why? Because for the last element it is not compulsory for me to take the last element. I can just decide whether I want to start by taking this element or I do not want to start by taking this element. So I can just take dp of n 0, right? This will be my final answer. So let us uh, like quickly summarize what I just said. So this problem as we have discussed can be solved with dp. How did I know that this can be solved with dp? You can if you have solved some dp problems or if you have studied dp then you must have realized that this is kind of a uh, knapsack problem and it is a slight modification of it. Now at each state, I would want to know what are the different transitions or what are the different states that I can have for each index, right? So I realized that at each index, there are two ways to reach the current index, right? Either I would have taken the previous element or I would have not taken the previous element. If I have taken the previous element, then it is not compulsory for me to take the current element. It's my choice whether I want to take it or not. If I am not taking the previous element, according to the condition given in the statement, problem statement, I would want to take the current element. It is compulsory for me. Like, right? Now, I don't have any choice. So, I define two variables x and y. Now, x will denote that I am not taking the current element and y will denote that I am taking the current element. So, when I have a choice, when, I, when the value of j is 0, that means I have a choice for the current index, then my dp of i0 will be equal to max of x, comma y, which means I am trying to take the current element or I am not trying to take the current element. Right? Now, if I, when I don't have a choice, then dp of i1 will be equal to y because I will have to take the current element. I have no choice for it. Now, my answer will be stored in dp of n0. Why? Because at, uh, at position n, all the elements will be considered and 0. Why? Because for the last element, it's my choice whether I want to start by taking this current element or not. Right. So, this is, uh, this is completely up to me. That is why my answer will be stored in dp of n0. So, let us quickly discuss uh, the code for this particular problem. So, the code is also very simple. It is not very difficult. So, it says what I have done is I have created a double dimensional dp vector. So, it is of size n plus 1 and the second dimension is of 2 size. Right. Now, I just traverse through the vector from starting from position 1 till n plus 1. Now, for e, I, I create two states x and y. At x, I am storing, I want to take the current element. So, let me just quickly write it down in the comments. So, uh, take the take the current element. Right. Uh, and y will be equal to y will be when I don't want to take the current element. Do not take current element. So, this is what x and y are denoting. Right. So, when I don't have a choice, right, when the index is 1, that means I don't have a choice, I will take directly x. When I have a choice whether I want to take the current element, I will take maximum of x comma y. So, at the end, uh, at that moment while solving this question, I return maximum of these two values, but it is not actually necessary. You can just return dp of n0. So, let me just quickly submit it and show you that this works. So you see we have passed all the test cases and you can return uh, like while solving the problem I just returned maximum of both of the values but this is also correct because for the last element we don't actually have like have a constraint we can either start by taking the last element or we can start by not taking the last element both of our are valid ways right so at the end I can just return tp of n0. So that's it for today's uh, problem of the day and I hope you that you guys were able to understand the solution if you guys did then consider dropping a like on this video. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. It's always free of cost and you can always unsubscribe if you don't find the videos interesting later. By liking on this video, you can help the YouTube algorithm to understand that this video was actually helpful for you and will be able to reach more number of people like you who want to learn uh, solving new problems. So till the next video drops, keep coding, stay safe, bye-bye.